world's premier city, one of the richest and most powerful areas of the planet, and Miami, the jewel of the Sunshine State and supreme example of the American dream. Both are glorious cities but are threatened by one of nature's most terrifying phenomena that will one day race from across the ocean and engulf the east coast of the United States, the Mega Tsunami. Fifty million people live on the Atlantic coast of America, and every person could be in danger. Scientists at University College London are leading the research into the geological time bomb and know full well what we can expect. It will hit with the power of an atomic bomb, effectively, and be travelling at the speed of a jumbo jet, and it will wipe out anything that's uh, not nailed down and many things that are. As they move across the ocean, they uh, spread out and diminish in height, but even so, when they reach the other side of the ocean, they can be several tens of metres high at a distance of thousands of kilometres from the source island. And because they're tsunami waves rather than ordinary waves, they don't just break on the shore, they move inland as very fast moving, very turbulent floods, and they can go up to 20 kilometres in, inland. This would actually have devastating effects once it hit uh, New York, Miami and the Bahamas. Well, it'll be devastating, absolutely devastating. It will take something like eight hours for the wave to travel from the Canaries to the other side of the Atlantic. Um, places like New York, places like uh, Philadelphia, Washington will be hit very, very badly by this. The, Cana the Caribbean islands of the Bahamas, um, which are very low lying, will also be devastated. Um, it's difficult to predict exactly what the, the, the final result will be, but you're talking probably millions dead and massive destruction. The um, mega tsunamis that we're concerned about are anything up to a kilometre high and they're caused by landslides. Tsunamis are giant waves created by earthquakes. As an earthquake occurs, the Earth's surface splits. A shock wave travels through the ocean and is viewed as a tsunami when the wave reaches shore. Most tsunamis are 10 to 20 metres high but can devastate coastal areas. Mega tsunami is much, much more. We're talking here about a chunk of rock about 200 cubic kilometers in size, which is really quite, quite enormous. And secondly, with an earthquake, um, you shake the ocean bed. That's what generates a tsunami with, a, with an earthquake. In this case, you're not shaking the seabed, you're dropping a chunk of rock, a huge chunk of rock into the sea, um, as if you're throwing a rock into a, into a pool. And that's much more effective at generating much bigger waves. So it's a completely different mechanism from earthquake-generated tsunami. Simon Day, one of the world's leading geologists, has pinpointed the reason for the waves. The key piece of our research, the key result, is that we've shown that these landslides from volcanoes, which can have volumes of hundreds or even thousands of cubic kilometres, are triggered by volcanic eruptions. As the magma rises within the volcano to trigger the eruption, it starts to push off the flank of the volcano. And the key thing is that the magma, as it's coming up through the volcano, heats up groundwater within the volcano. And the groundwater tries to expand, but it's trapped in the pores in the rock, so it becomes pressurised instead. And this pressure is what pushes off the flank of the volcano into the ocean, where it will generate these mega tsunami waves. Unfortunately for America, the coastline is adding to the disaster. Washington DC and Philadelphia may be crushed because of the shape of the Chesapeake Bay. Tsunami are controlled by the shape of the coastline and by how flat the coastline is. Um, if it's very flat, then these, a wave of that size could easily penetrate in for several kilometers. Um, if you're dealing with a bay or an estuary, then the wave can be focused into that. It can build even higher and push all the way up the river or into the harbor. Um, on the other hand, if you have very high cliffs, then the wave is liable to hit against the cliffs and not travel very far. So it does depend on the very local detail of the coast. 
Mark Maslin believes the centre of this possible disaster is the Cumbrae Vieca volcano in the Canary Islands. Well, it seems that we found that um, half the island of La Palma could actually collapse into the ocean, causing a tsunami wave about 600 metres high. And Bill Maguire has delved even deeper. Well, the Canary Islands are volcanoes, they're active volcanoes. Um, these volcanoes periodically collapse to generate gigantic sea waves, tsunami or tidal waves, they're sometimes known. Now, these sorts of events are normally caused by earthquakes, and they tend, the waves tend to be 10 metres high, 15 metres high. But in the Canary Islands, we're dealing with a potential collapse of the island of La Palma, which might generate a wave which is 600 metres, 2,000 feet high to start with. And when it reaches the other side of the Atlantic, it will still be 50 metres or 150 feet high. The United States of America is the world's largest economy, and scientists are working furiously to try and predict when the catastrophe will hit. Smaller uh, volcano collapses have occurred in history. Uh, an example is the collapse of Oshima Oshima off Japan in 1741, which produced a tsunami in the Sea of Japan. But that was quite a small event. The very biggest event, with landslides with volumes of hundreds or thousands of cubic kilometres, occur much more rarely. On the long-term average, over very long periods, they occur about one every 20,000 years. But the trouble is, we think the collapses may occur in groups. When this is what we thought at first, we thought it was one of these uh, geological events that could happen tomorrow, but it's more likely to happen in thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. However, Simon Day and myself found that if you look at the global record of these in the geological history, they always seem to occur during extremely warm periods. 